Hey there guys, it's your favorite backyard geographer out in the field, this time just a little bit north of the coastal mountain range along the eastern Sierra along 395. As you can see behind me, I'm located at Red Hill. Now the reason I'm here is because this basalt that's on the ground behind me, these are from lava flows between 10 and 400,000 years old, but they have a very unique history and geologic design as we experience Fossil Falls. Well, welcome to Fossil Falls. Now, what we see here are not anything that's fossilized, but a really interesting geologic history. So the volcanics in this area date between 10,000 to 400,000 years ago. We're within the coastal mountains, which is all volcanics. In fact, we can see it from Google Earth, all the additional flows that have occurred over that time. But what was also happening at that time was the end of the late Pleistocene, our last great glaciation. All that ice was melting, providing billions and billions of gallons of water that was draining from a chain of lakes that we'll talk about in a moment. That drainage occurred, and as this basalt was cooling, that water was coming through, abrading, polishing, and essentially creating the most majestic rock formation on this side of the Sierra. So what we stand facing are some e excellent examples of erosion. In fact, we call this plunge pool erosion because you can see that as the water was coming through, it was twirling, it was fluting and polishing this basalt with all of the other grain material. This is basalt. That is granite. That's the Sierra Nevada. That's some of the hardest rock in the world. So as those minerals slowly worked their way down here through erosion, then got caught up in these torrents of waters and were polishing and fluting, and swirling and making these really neat pocked holes. I kind of feel like a, a meerkat when you come visit this location. So I've mentioned the spillover thing with these lakes, and I think this is an excellent way to explain it. So during the late Pleistocene, California was experiencing the last of its great glaciation. And these pools are great representations of that. As that ice melted, it forms lakes. And we had a chain of lakes in California that were monumentous. So looking at these, I'm gonna use it as an example because you can see that these swirling pools feed into one another. One fills up, it pours into the next, pours into the next, and continues all the way down. So the chain of lakes in this area began over a million years ago up at Mono Lake, California. That was the first lake. Then Mono Lake would spill over into Crawley which would then spill over into Owens Lake, which then passed, drained through here, and went to China Lake downward. Then it would go to Cyril's, then to Panamint, and then the largest lake, Lake Manly, which you might know of as being Death Valley. Death Valley, or Lake Manly itself, was a massive freshwater terminal lake, meaning that's where all the water ended. So it's incredible to think that a place filled with so much salt had so much fresh water in it. And where did it come from? It all ran through this point right here at Fossil Falls. So 10,000 seems to be the lucky number. So again, late Pleistocene 10,000 years ago when this area would have been forming, but also about 10,000 years ago, that is the oldest date that we have for some of the earliest peoples along the Eastern Sierra. They have a very interesting history as well because at the same time that people were living in this area 10,000 years ago, we also have to remember that so were things such as the woolly mammoth. What's kind of a fun you know, story about that, I was asked to be part of an archeological dig here not that far from this location where we were able to exhume a tusk and a rear leg of a woolly mammoth. So coming back to the early peoples, interesting story in how they were here. So about 10,000 years ago, you, we have the earliest known you know, people that lived here. Then we moved forward to about 6,000 years ago and it became too dry for them to live. So they ended up leaving. And so we have a missing gap in that history. Then about 4,000 years ago, they began returning. And what was exciting about that return is that so did art. And as you can see behind me is an Indian petroglyph 
There's a difference between pictographs and petroglyphs. Pictographs are paintings on walls and caves. Petroglyphs are carved within the rock, and we're able to do carbon dating on those type of you know, those designs. So something that I want to mention, though, is that when you see stuff like this, this is such an important piece of culture and history. And we have to remember that the only way that we can enjoy this is if we preserve it. So, you know, take pictures and leave those memories behind and just make sure that you preserve this for other people to enjoy. All too many times out in this area, we do find that some you know, people want to you know, add their own drawings to these or do graffiti on top of them. I mean, all you're doing is destroying such a rich heritage and past. So just remember, enjoy it, photograph it, and leave it for other people to enjoy as well. So something else that we can observe in this location here in Fossil Falls is something a little different, which is kind of cool. As you can see in my hand, I've got a very small piece of obsidian. And this is you know, a, a, a shrapnel, uh, a piece that's been broken up. Now, the reason why this is important is for two pieces. One is it tells us, since the entire ground here is covered in it, that these are the remnants of the early Indians, their tool making. So these are, you know, when they were making their tool, chipping away that bigger piece of obsidian, these little bits and pieces would be flying all over the place as they are making their, their blades, their arrowheads, and other tools. Now what's interesting you know, as a geologist about this obsidian is it's not from here. This obsidian is from much farther north. So what we see here is that this is the drainage you know, that would have flown into uh, the fossil falls itself, but where did this water come from and so on and so forth. Um, this, you know, some of this obsidian is more prominent up in the Mammoth area. So you have to imagine that they would have either brought the obsidian to these locations or they would have been chipped away up there and as the water drains through, it deposits along the way. One thing to remember is that we can see it, we can observe it, we can learn about it, but make sure you put it back because if everyone took it, there would be nothing left and these are protected by the state of California. Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's visit at Fossil Falls. It's not just geographic or geologic, it was also cultural. Don't forget to check out my other videos, comment below, don't forget to subscribe, and we'll talk soon.